for new life today. New life in your marriage. New life in your family today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Well, we want to welcome you here all across this room. You can be seated. It's so good to see a bunch of new faces in the room, Pastor Tommy. It's great to see you here today. And this is your first time with us, or maybe your first time in a while, whether in the room or online. That's right. We would like to welcome you here to Vibrant Church. Let's put our hands together for everyone today. Great to see all of our VIPs, our very important people in yep. the room. And Pastor Tommy, just by being here, they're already making a difference. So tell us That's a right. little bit about that. So whenever you scan the QR code on the seat back in front of you or you fill out that Connect card yes. and take it to our VIP area, our team would love to meet you at the end of service today. When you drop that off, uh, we take funds and we donate them in your honor to the Mississippi Food Network, which is a, a ministry across the state that provides meals to That's families right. That's right. all across the state of Mississippi. And since we've been doing this, we've been able to provide 62,359 meals to families That's all good. across the state of Mississippi. So thank you, VIPs, for being here today and making a difference. That's right. And we encourage everyone in the room, if this is your first time, to try out Vibrant at least three times that's right to get the full experience of what what's happening here that's in right Columbus, Mississippi another thing too that goes on around here is something called belong which is an experience that we have for yep. anyone that's interested in kind of finding out more about yourself about vibrant church that's right even some ways that you could get connected through serving if that's kind of where your heart is going toward well that is today yes at six o'clock this evening in the Next Gen Auditorium, we have our Belong Come experience, on. and it's we take exciting. All the excuses out of the way. Yeah, we don't we don't want to have any excuses. So there's food is provided, <laughs> yeah. child care is provided, and yeah. we just want you to come and be a part of our Belong experience. Because one thing we say around here is we believe that everyone needs right. a place to belong, That's and we right. want you to know that you belong here. We're we're That's thankful right. that you're here. Amen, amen. And then next Sunday, it's one of our favorite Sundays. Yes. Baptism Sunday is next yep. Sunday. Let's go, church. God's doing an amazing work, and maybe you have considered being baptized, said, hey, I'm ready to take my faith to the next step. And this is simply an outward declaration of what God has done on the inward parts of you. It's declaring your faith. If you're interested in signing up, you can go to uh, vibrantchurch.com slash baptism that's right and, and we're gonna have everything prepared it is you. the one of the most exciting services Very here on any so. sunday it's just amazing. seeing people celebrate as people make that declaration yeah. and make a public profession of their yes. faith another thing is 21 days of prayer we've been doing that this month even had that's to make right. some changes that's because right. Uh, Mississippi decided to freeze last week <laughs> and did it online. But this week, we're back in the auditorium, 6 a.m. Monday yes. and Tuesday morning. Let's end strong. But yeah, Let's if you haven't strong. made it to prayer, be here for prayer. We have worship, a great yeah. prayer time. What a what an awesome way to start your day. Come on, man. Come so we on. want you here for that. And then next week, everybody say next week. Next week is small group season one launch date. Hey, so if you're in a go. small group or you want to be a part of a small group, those go live next week. And we are excited about small group season right. one. Make sure you get connected, find a group, yeah. find somebody to do life with. Yes. I promise you it will make a difference. Well, and you, we've heard Pastor Ethan say it, life is better in circles. Yep. So sometimes right. you say, hey, I want to get engaged, get connected. Start with a small group as a great next step for you. I want to remind you guys that everything that you have heard today is brought to you by the generosity of those who are helping push the mission of yep. the kingdom of God forward here at Vibrant Church. So we want to thank you for being generous. Thank you for giving. Uh, we are able to do so much because of people who That's believe right. in what God is doing here. And you can give on the way out today in the giving boxes or online. There's ways to give on the screen behind me. But thank you for being a generous church. And we love you guys. It's awesome. Well, are you ready for worship? Let's go. Let's, Let's go. all stand together. Let's go back into a time of worship. Father, we thank you for this time together. We thank you, God, that we could, we could be anywhere today, but we're here. And we just ask you, God, to meet us in this place, that lives would be changed, that hearts would be touched. God, we give you this moment, and we thank you in advance for all that you're going to do today. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, let's continue to worship together.
Do what only you can do in this place. Do what only you can do in this place today, God. We trust you. We seek your face. We worship you for who you are. We love your name, Jesus. Come on. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. He's been my fourth man in the fire, time after time. And born of his spirit, and 
washed in his blood and what he did for me on calvary is more than enough oh i trust in god my savior the one Never fail. I trust in God, my Savior, the one who will never fail. He will never fail. Perfect submission. i yeah. 
on, sing it to heaven with your own lips today. From your heart, from your spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We have been in 21 days of prayer. Jesus said, my house shall be called a house of prayer and in this season we've been praying for miracles and been praying that God shows up for people dealing with doctor's reports and uh, dealing with family issues and troubles and struggles and come on how many of you filled a thing out on that card the last few weeks it's been hard it's, it's been heavy you've been going through some things you're dealing with some stuff the other day during the prayer uh, morning we have at 6 a.m. I I felt to share something and came back to me just sitting down there. There's a story in the Bible, in the Old Testament, the prophet Elijah was alive at the same time King Ahab was leading the nation of Israel, and they had had a drought for three years, the Bible says. And Elijah looks at him and says, go get something to eat, because I hear the sound of abundance of rain. I don't see rain. I don't even feel rain. But I hear something. I, Because I, how many of you know we walk by faith and not by sight? I hear something. I just know it's somewhere in my heart that it's going to rain. The Bible says that the prophet Elijah went up into the Mount Carmel. And he prayed. The Bible said he put his head down and he began to seek God and he got his assistant to go look and see if any rain was coming from the west, coming from the Mediterranean Sea area. The Bible says he comes back and says, I see no rain coming. But that didn't deter what the prophet heard. He said, I heard rain coming. I don't need to see rain to know it's coming. I don't need to see things the way I, that we think we need to see them to know God's doing something supernatural. And the Bible says he goes back and he starts to pray again. And he sends the guy one more time. And he comes back and says, I don't see nothing. Have you ever been there when you prayed and didn't see nothing? The Bible says he sends him back again seven times. If I was that assistant, I would have been like, listen here, bro. How about I pray this time when you go through the walking? <laughs> the Bible says on the seventh time. Somebody say the seventh time. The servant came back and told the prophet, I see a cloud. He said, it ain't a big cloud. He goes, it's about the size of my hand in the distance coming up from out of the sea. I see it way out there. And the prophet said, he said, get back to the king before the rain stops you. Because the prophet said, I'm starting to see with my eyes what I heard with my ears. I'm starting to sense in the atmosphere it's going to rain. I've come to tell you today, you've been praying for 21 days. And some of you, you feel like you ain't seen nothing come to pass. You've been wondering, but it may just be something. You may have just got a text from someone you've been praying for, or maybe just a little bit of a positive response, and you're like, God, is it going to rain? Can I tell you, do not neglect the day of small beginnings. When you see clouds coming, when you see results coming, you just say, you know what? I heard you before I saw you. I knew you were coming. I knew my son was going to get saved. I knew my daughter was going to get touched. I knew you were going to heal my mind. I know you were going to restore my heart. Is there anybody know what it's like? Yeah.
participate in this. But if you're praying for a miracle, you, you just need God to get involved. I, I know you may have filled a card out, and that's great, but we need all the prayer we can get. Can I get a big amen? Just all over the room, if you're in, something's on your heart. Something's just heavy. Something's just feeling out of sorts. You're, you're dealing with stuff that nobody knows about you. You're wrestling in your heart. Here's what I want you to do. Just right there in your seat. You don't have to move. I want you to raise that hand nice and high for God to see. Come on, just all over the room. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Look at that. Look at people with needs, people with hurt. I want you to keep your hand up. As a church, let's pray together. Let's just ask God to get involved. Can we do that? We're in the spirit of 21 days of prayer, and I just believe God answers prayer. I believe that. So, Father, you see every need and every request. You see every broken heart, every broken dream, every struggling business, every teenager that's running from you. You see the people dealing with insecurity and addiction and struggles. You see the people in this room that are fighting with their in turmoil in their heart and in their minds. Uh, Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that you come and visit your people. Strengthen your people. Encourage your people. God, you have bottled their tears. You have heard their cry. And just like how you told Moses, how I heard and I'm coming down to save them. Father, I pray you hear these cries. In Jesus' name, I pray, devil, get your hands off of them. I pray the work of the enemy be canceled today in the name of Jesus, that no weapon formed against you shall be able to prosper, and the rest of your days will be blessed and full of favor and unity. I pray, family, peace on your home, and victory over your marriage, and victory in your mind. I pray it in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. And this church said... Amen. Come on, give God a big praise all over this room. Praise God. Feels good to be at church, don't it? Feels good to get out of the house, don't it? The schools kept canceling. and It was funny, they said, and the school did a great job, all the schools in the area, and we thank God for them prioritizing our kids' safety. However... The safest thing for our kids after five days is to not be at home with us. <laughs> but it's good to be here. Revival is coming this week. You excited about it? I'm really excited about Revival Nights Tuesday night. This is coming this coming Tuesday. Tuesday night, Wednesday night, Thursday night. All three of these speakers are going to be people that I believe are going to encourage you and strengthen you. I look at it like this. If you're going to come and you're going to prioritize the house of God, we're going to feed you good when you come into the house of God. It's going to be prime. It's going to be some nice steak this week. You're going to eat good. Yeah, somebody felt it. But before you're seated, I want you to greet a few people around you. Let them know it's good to see them in the house of God. I want you to check this video out as soon as you're seated. Blindness is not a lack of sight. Sometimes blindness is the result of looking at life through too many lenses. And God wants you and I to only have what we call a biblical or a scriptural worldview. Because the enemy may have defeated you with some secret sin or some issue, but whether or not he disarms you is going to be up to you. The enemy may have defeated you, but he will not disarm you. I wonder if I'm preaching to anybody today that is declared, oh, I'm armed and dangerous. Sometimes in the middle of the storm, when you cannot see God at work, when you wonder if he's hearing your prayers and you're wondering if he's moving on your behalf, those are the moments he gives you your greatest revelation. Because you come out the other side you come up declaring if God be for me what or who can be against me
going to be a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Kids is going to be running, and, and you can live stream, but it's not the same. You know that. Come on. Somebody say amen. amen. All right. So last week, I spoke to you about fresh oil. How many of you were here last week when we preached on fresh oil? And I had so much in my spirit that I didn't get to share that I want to continue that thought today. Last week, if you were here or were not here, I want to encourage you to go back if you weren't here to listen to it. I talked about uh, oil, fresh oil in our personal lives and how God can help us in the seasons that we're in and God knows exactly what we need when we need it and we need a fresh touch of the Holy Spirit in our day-to-day -day life. Can I get a big amen right there? And last week, I felt to, to anoint everybody with oil, and a lot of people are not familiar with that. I haven't seen it done in a long time. Every person who wanted to be anointed with oil, and the last, the last person we prayed for at the end of the day was, I think, at 1.30 in the afternoon. We prayed for every person, every musician who just said, you know what, this season of my life, the worship team came down, I want fresh oil. It was an amazing time in God's presence last week. And uh, I wanna continue that thought. Last week we talked about how we need fresh oil in our lives. Today I wanna talk about how we need oil in the church. Matthew chapter 25. Jesus is sharing a parable and he says this. Verse number one. Then the kingdom of heaven will be like 10 virgins who took their lamps and went out to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were foolish, and five of them were wise. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took no oil with them. But the wise took flasks of oil with their lamps. As the bridegroom was delayed, they all became drowsy and, and slept. But at midnight, somebody say midnight, there was a cry, here is the bridegroom, come out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps, and the foolish said to the wise, give us some of your oil, for our lamps are going out. In the Greek, it says they've gone out. Verse nine, but the wise answered saying, since there will not be enough for us and for you, go rather to the dealers and buy for yourselves. And while they were going to buy, the bridegroom came and those who were ready went in with him to the marriage feast, and the door was shut. Afterward, the other virgins came also saying, Lord, Lord, open to us, but he said, but he answered, truly I say to you, I do not know you. Watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour. This parable is a little bit of a mystery to theologians and writers. Jesus is building this parable on the ancient Middle Eastern wedding which is much different than how we do weddings and how we perform ceremonies in the United States in our current time. The reality of it is when you read this, sometimes out of context, kind of hard to figure out what they're speaking of. The marriage did not take place in that time in a synagogue or a church. It actually took place in the groom's home. In Bible times, the bridegroom, the groom, what we would call him, would negotiate with the woman's father and they would come to an agreement, and he would say, I, I want to marry your daughter. They would come to some agreement. And the man would make a promise to the woman and say, I'll come back, and I'll, I'll make you my, my wife. Commencing the engagement. He would leave for an unknown amount of time and build onto his father's house, making space for him and his wife to begin a new family. It's the same words that Jesus echoes in John chapter 14 when he says these words, in my father's house there are many mansions. This is the idea of the promise that was given to the bride. If it were not so, I would not have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. If I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again, receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. Now, Jesus was communicating to us about heaven, but that was the same promise that was given to the wife to be committing, starting the engagement between them. And he would come back at an unknown time, unexpected, nobody knew, the day or hour he would arrive. 
And the way he knew that she was going to fulfill her end of the engagement, to know that the engagement was still intact, that they would take a lamp and they would put it in their window to signify to everyone that they were engaged and they were waiting for the return of the bridegroom to take them to their new home. And the key was to keep the fire burning in that lamp. So when, that when the bridegroom came and he saw that fire burning in the window, he knew that she had kept herself for him and that a new life can begin. In his book, Holy Fire, R.T. Kendall, and along with other scholars, interpret this parable as a symbol of the church when Christ returns. In his book, he begins to explain that there are some things that we need to, in this day and hour, understand that the church needs to remember. Is that the church really needs two things. The church needs the lamp, and the church needs the oil. The lamp, according to scripture, represents the word of God. Psalms 119, 105 says, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. If you're taking notes today, the last day church needs this, we must prioritize the word of God. We must keep the word of God at the forefront of our lives and in our churches. Hebrews chapter four, verse 12 says, for the word of God is alive and powerful. It is sharper than the sharpest two-edged sword cutting between soul and spirit, between joints and marrow. It exposes our innermost thoughts and desires. Let me tell you something, there is nothing like the word of God. There is nothing like when you go to a service when somebody just opens the word of God and begins to preach what God has in these word and in these pages, and it begins to stir the hearts and lives of people in a fresh and unique way. What's interesting throughout the Bible, we have many things that talks about the importance of prioritizing the word of God. As you can see on the screen behind me, we could, uh, here's just eight different things I could show you. The word of God is our, our source of faith. The word of God is our source of truth. The word of God is our source of freedom. The Bible says that the, who, who the sun sets free, you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. Can I get a big amen? That more and more in culture, people are deceived. We don't need more commentary from media. We need the truth. Can I get a yes? We, it's our source of spiritual food. Jesus said that we do not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. The source of victory over temptation. David says in Psalms 119, thy word have I hid in my heart that I may not sin against you. The Bible says he's a source of guidance. That verse of the word is a lamp unto my feet, light unto my path. Scripture says that it is a source of spiritual victory. That, that is our sword of the spirit, Paul teaches in Ephesians chapter six. Uh, it is our source of, equip, of equipping ourselves. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 through 17, the Bible teaches that the word of God equips us fully to a perfect, finished work. In our church today, we prioritize the word of God. We want our small groups to prioritize the word of God. When your kids come to youth night, I need you to know that when they're in uh, at, on Wednesday nights with Pastor Josiah, I know the man. He takes his time. He studies to show himself approved. And when he preaches to those students, he's not just preaching an idea or a thought or something to get through. He's preaching the word of God. When your kids are in kids ministry, we put it down to their level. But just the other day, I was with my son, and we have him a little Bible, and I was going through it, and I was sharing with him a story that I know I have never shared with him before. It was a new story in the Bible that he told me the story, and I said, where did you learn that? He goes, I learned it at church because we prioritize, come on, talk back to me, the word of God. Paul told Timothy, preach the word. He says that the word is useful to teach us and what is true and to make us realize what is wrong in our lives. It corrects us when we are wrong and teaches us to do what is right. The word of God, how many of you know you can come to church and the word of God can encourage somebody in one section 
and challenge somebody in another section. Only the Bible could do that. Somebody who's hurting in their life could be sitting in those risers and could be encouraged by the healing oil of God touching their spirit. And there's somebody down here, it is like gravel going down their throat. Because the word of God somehow can cut us and challenge us and encourage us and remind us and strengthen us. And what amazes me about the word of God, we've, the, the culture has been trying to get rid of the Bible for hundreds of years, trying to burn it and, and bury it and cancel it and, and diminish it and get rid of it. But over time, like oil above water, truth just keeps coming to the top. You can't burn it. You can't bury it. You can't get rid of it. The word of God stands Forever the grass withers and the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall remain forever. We need the word of God. We need the word of God preached in the house. We need the word of God read in your house. You need the word of God on your cell phone. You need, there's, let me tell you something. You can never read enough of it. You're never like, you know what? I don't need any more. You need a whole lot more, especially if you're thinking that. Not only do we need the Word of God, we need to prioritize the Word of God, the Scripture then lets us know that they had lamps and they had oil. We talked last week about how the oil represents the Holy Spirit. So not only do we need to prioritize the Word of God, we need to prior prioritize the Holy Spirit. Throughout the Scripture, you'll see that they would whether it was a dove or a wind, things can be used in Scripture to illustrate the Holy Spirit. Today, what we see many times throughout Scripture is the anointing of the Holy Spirit is that touch, that special edge. I talked about it last week. That special presence of the Holy Spirit in our lives. And, and just a few more, just as I did on the Bible, I want to show you this, the Holy Spirit, what the Holy Spirit does for us. The Holy Spirit helps us, John 14, 26. Jesus does these three in a row. He helps us, he teaches us, he reminds us. The Holy Spirit convicts us. How many of you are thankful for that? That when you wanted to speak your mind, the Holy Spirit's like, Nick. <laughs> Leads us, empowers us. Acts chapter one, verse eight. Works through us, and makes us fruitful. These are just some of, there's way many, there's a lot more in scripture I could share just trying to help you get a bite size of what the Holy Spirit does in our lives. The Holy Spirit working in our day-to-day -day lives and in our corporate gatherings is vital, hear me today, for the last day church. We need the Holy Spirit, not just in church services, but to raise our kids, to build businesses, to lead us in hard times, but also in church services, in our worship, in our preaching, in our students, in our kids' ministry, in our small groups. We want the oil to flow. I don't know about you, but I love church. I've been to a lot of churches in my life, still go to a lot of churches, and, and one of my favorite things is that when you get into a room and the oil begins to flow. I don't know how to describe it to you. I don't know how to explain it to you. I don't even know how to make it happen. But sometimes you could just be sitting in the room and the praises of God are filling the atmosphere. And the Bible says he inhabits the praises of his people. And all of a sudden you begin to sense faith rising in the room. Have you ever begin to feel it in the end of worship a moment ago? Faith was in the room. Tears begin to flow. Hands begin to raise. People begin to clap. People begin to cheer. What's going on? I've come to tell you that's the oil flowing. You you, you, this, something happens in a room when the oil begins to flow. There's just that special touch in the room. That thing that we desperately need as the body of Christ is that oil to keep flowing today. And I get encouraged when I'm sitting in our church or I go out and I sit here and I, I get, I'm so thankful because I don't want a church that's just dry I don't know about you, but I don't want to attend a church that's just going through formalities. I need to know God was in the house. <laughs> when I go to the movies, I say this all the time, when I go to the movies, I want to know I've been to the movies. When I go out to a restaurant, I want to know I've been to a restaurant. When I go out to fishing, I want to know I went out fishing. When I go to church, I want to know I've been to church. 
I want to know God was in the house. I want to know the tears. I don't want to feel guilty if, if I get emotional in the house of God. When the oil flows, I'm just telling you that, that the church desperately needs the oil. Desperately. And it's like my father, when we were, uh, I was raised in his ministry and uh, my dad's a pastor, my brother's a pastor, my other brother's a pastor, my sister's married to a pastor, my other sister's not even saved, I think, but the rest of us are good. <laughs> the rest of us are good. Pray for Cheyenne Boggs if you get it in. Needs a little Jesus. To Jesus, touch her. Send a little oil to Ohio this morning, Lord. <laughs> but the rest of us, straight and narrow, okay? But the, she took the Broadway. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She goes to church. She just not saved. Okay, anyway, so <laughs> I'm joking. So listen, listen, what am I doing right now? Oh, okay, so, so, so when I was raised in dad's, we was all raised in the church, you know, just, it wasn't a big church. My dad preached every Sunday. We was a storefront church most of our lives, and dad preached revivals all over, so all of us kids we didn't have cool kids ministry growing up. We had to go to church and sit on the front row, and Dad would promise us all McDonald's after church. Praise God. And, and we would all go, and, and, and one thing, as I grew up, we, one thing I learned about my father and my mother is they prioritized the presence of God. They prioritized oil. They prioritized that anointing. They prioritized the presence of God in a special way. In fact, to the point that when I was called out of my father's church to start serving at another church to be on their staff, my dad looked at me and told me two things. This is the truth. He, two things. This is all my dad. He didn't tell me how to budget. He didn't teach me nothing else. But this is what he told me. He said two things. We, me and Lena weren't married yet. And uh, Lena's, my kids have the flu today, so be praying for them. But Lena told me, she said, or uh, my dad told me, he goes, now listen, I love this leaner bell. That's what he always calls her. I love this leaner bell. And this is two things he told me. Number one, don't you let her take you out of church. That's good advice, parents. And I don't feel bad. Like, my wife, she's tried, but I won't let her. <laughs> I was just kidding. He said, don't let your wife take you out of church. He goes, I don't care what color she is. I don't care how much money she has. I don't care what family she comes from. But do not let you, who you marry, take you out of church. Great advice. The Bible says that's the only restriction on marriage. As long as they're saved, you can get married to them. Amen? So watch this. This is, this is, this is, this is the... The next thing he said, and don't forget about the Holy Spirit. It's the second thing he told me. Didn't tell, didn't, that was it. The two things. Ethan, if you and your wife keep God at the center, it's going to be okay. And don't you dare forget about the oil. Don't you dare forget. I'm on the phone this week with a minister who runs thousands of people, has a very large platform, great guy. And he tells me, he says, Ethan, you, get, you keep learning how to lead. You keep being, you know, keep... You gotta build structures and teams and staffing and budgeting. There's a lot of things that you just keep figuring out, keep learning to, to there's a lot that goes into running a larger congregation and organization and, 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 and daycares and things like that. But he said the number one thing you need to do, stay anointed. Stay anointed. It is gonna be the thing that carries you all the days of your life if you could just stay in the oil. Do not lose sight of the oil. Now listen, what I just read to you, Matthew chapter 25, the interesting thing about it, according to this parable, the easier of the two to neglect is the oil. Did you catch that? Watch this, Matthew 25, three. For when the foolish took their lamps, they took the lamps, and they took no oil with them. These five virgins, these five individuals waiting on the groom to come, were characterized as foolish because they left the oil behind. Somewhere along the way in the church world, hear me this morning, and I want to try not to get fussy right here, but somewhere along the way the church has learned that we can do church without the Holy Spirit. Somewhere along the way the church has learned that we don't need anything, since, we don't need anything that, would, that, that, has that, that we're not in control of. That's part of why. Because you don't want to lose givers, and you don't want to lose people, and, and this may be too weird for people, and, and you know, people get emotional, and, and we just need to stick to the word, we need to stick to this, and, and I'm, not, I'm not putting the word down when I lift the spirit up, 
But there are people, we've learned how to do church without the presence of God. We've learned that if we just paint the room black and throw a few screens around and, and, and we can get some people in the room, but here's what's happening. Can I just tell you what I'm seeing in 2024 in the church world is that we have concert services, that we have gatherings of people, we have individuals who are coming to the house of God, and we have these people who are, we have this concert vibe. I'm just being, can I just be real today? Can you handle this? We have this concert vibe. We have music that we call worship. We have a guy that gets up and does a motivational speech with a God slant and convinced us it was called church. And yet people walk out broken. People walk out hurt. People walking, this, walking out the same way they came in. The Bible says that the yoke shall be destroyed because of the anointing. When people lose the oil, when the church loses the oil, when services lose the oil, when pastors lose the oil, when staffs lose the oil, we have to start compensating to impress you, to keep you, to entertain you. Do you like this message? Do you like our kids program? Do you like, a, we'll make it shorter. Is, is 59 and a half minutes good for you? Will you come back? I'm hurting some feelings today. I'm hurting some feelings today. We gotta impress people to keep them engaged and that was never the calling of a pastor. The pastor was to get up, preach the word, let the oil fall, let the cards fall as they may. Instead of, being, instead of being supernatural, the church has turned superficial. We got a whole lot of, we got a whole lot of word and we're preaching and, we got, and we're doing this to try to help people, but we've left out the oil. And hear me, the oil is the difference maker. It is that touch from God that we cannot produce. You know, I could go on Google and figure this out pretty quick. I could deliver a three-point sermon, steal from somebody, do whatever. But you know what I can't produce off YouTube and Google? This. I can't make this. This comes from a life that's consecrated to God. This comes from a life that's leaning and dependent on God. This comes from a life when the church gathers around his name and just worships him and praises him. It is the part of us that says, God, we can't do it. And the oil begins to flow. Oh, man, I have so much to say. Matthew 25, verse 4 says, But the wise took flasks of oil. So the foolish, last day ministries have focused on one. I didn't say it was foolish, Jesus did. Has focused on one. And the wise, the Bible says, took flasks of oil. So they didn't just have oil in their lamp to start, they had flasks with them to keep refilling the oil. Can I tell you today, that's how it works. You don't just get the Holy Spirit one time and be done. The Holy Spirit is a lifestyle that you keep stirring in your heart, that you keep calling on his name, you keep consecrating yourself, you keep calling on him and searching out his word and seeking his presence and spending time in prayer. It is this continual, regular refilling in the tabernacle in the Old Testament. The scripture says that they were required to keep bringing oil into the tabernacle to keep the fire burning. And now watch this. I submit to you today that most churches in the United States have either picked oil or picked lamp. The lamp churches say that we need to emphasize more of the word and doctrine and teaching and preaching and discipleship. The oil churches say that we need to emphasize miracles and healings, a move of God and a revival. One says that we need education, the other says that we need experience. And can I tell you the answer? Yes to both. We need, it is not oil or lamp. It is oil and lamp. We need a church that is being discipled by the word and being empowered by his spirit. When you have, now watch this, I'm gonna be careful here because I think this is where I'll get an email, but you guys love that email inbox. I'm just kidding. When you, when you, I always gotta say I'm just kidding so I don't get an email, so. <laughs> Are you talking about me? When you have all lamp and no oil, when you have all word and no spirit, you have a church or a people 
that gravitate toward legalism and lifelessness. When you have a church or a people that is all oil and no lamp, all Holy Spirit and no word, you have a church that can gravitate towards sensationalism and it's sickly. It's flashy and it's hot. But here's the thing, that fire burning in that lamp, we have oil in the bottom of this lamp, that fire burning in that lamp right now, the safest thing for that fire is to be in this lamp. It, the Bible even says to test all the spirits, meaning that whatever is being claimed as the Holy Spirit needs to be submitted to the word. It doesn't ever supersede it. So watch this, there are people, now there are some extreme groups probably listening to me online or in the room, that are, that there are some extreme fringes in both groups. And, 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 and the word people, the, the lamp people, are like, I don't know about that, preacher. <laughs> All that ceased with the last apostle. And you've heard me teach this. It's that idea that it's called cessationism, that the Holy Spirit's function in the earth has ceased once we have the canonization of Scripture. And I've taught you on that. You can go back and listen to it, how it's not correct. But the idea that, that, this, that this is the truth, Pastor Ethan, and, 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 and we just need, you're wrong. That's what they'll say. This fringe group that's a little far on this side needs to understand that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If he could heal then, he could heal now. And then... The book of Acts, just to help you, the book of Acts, just another thought for you today, the book of Acts has this, has, is the documentation of the first century church and the actions of the apostles and the function of the Holy Spirit. It's a powerful book. Do you know the book of Acts out of all the New Testament books has no proper closing to the letter? Can I tell you why? Because it's still being written today. The book of Acts, God's spirit still wants to move today. And then there's this group. These are my favorites. If these people are a little crusty, these people are a little crazy. <laughs> Come on, say amen. This is the email people right here. I, this is the people gonna get me. I wanna make sure I don't, okay. I don't wanna say anything that's gonna make you mad. If it does, then sorry. Take your flag and go home. All right, now watch this. I'm playing, I'm playing. This, this extreme group. They want to be wild. We need more. I've had people tell me, like, Pastor Ethan, we're almost there. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel the fire just burning in you, preacher. And you let it off the hook. I'm running around this building. And it's like, listen, we ain't almost there, baby. We're there. We, got, we ain't going. To, people, people will say this. People will look at me and say, Pastor, when the Holy Ghost gets on me, I'm gonna run around this building. I can't help it when the Holy Ghost gets on me. I look at him like, Holy Ghost ain't never been on you. <laughs> Let's start there. Number two, <laughs> that was wrong. Here's number two. Number two, if the Holy Ghost gets on you, why is he gonna make you do something crazy? If he's gonna make you do something, why don't he make you holy? Instead of making you act like you're being stabbed and on fire, this is too much. This is to say amen if you're with me. Amen. So watch this. We get too far over here, and these people need to understand the scripture says everything needs to be done in decency and in order. We don't need to put the fire out. We don't need to pour the oil away because there's some extreme people that get things weird, and we don't need to throw the Bible out because there's legalistic people. Here's what we need to do. We got to get these two together. We got to be a spirit church and a word church. Are you with me? Bible says, Matthew twenty two twenty nine. but Jesus answered them, you are wrong because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. Look at that. Jesus noticing both groups. 1 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 5, for when we brought you the good news, Paul says, it was not only with words, but also with power. When I came and preached, she said, it wasn't just a lamp preaching, but I came with the oil as well. That's, are, you hearing, are you hearing what I'm saying? 
The Bible even says when they're looking for a leader in the book of Acts, chapter 6, the scripture says they're looking and they find a man named Stephen who is full of wisdom and the Holy Spirit. Here's what I want to say to maybe this group over here, people who want more of the Holy Spirit, people who maybe haven't emphasized the oil in their life like they should. Here's what I want you to know. You don't have to throw your mind away to be spirit-empowered. Weird people hijack the Holy Spirit, and normal people never ask for it back. According to Scripture, Jesus is looking for a people and a church who have had their lamps filled with the oil have emphasized the scripture, and that fire is burning when he comes back. That's my prayer for Vibrant Church, that in his return, when he looks this way, he's gonna not just see a lamp that has no fire, and he's not gonna see no oil that has no lamp. He's gonna see the oil and the lamp together and a fire burning bright for all the world to see. A healthy church is both a spirit church and a word church. Here's what I want you to write down. I'm gonna wrap up right here. The last day church needs to be equipped with the word and empowered by the spirit. This is our, this is our responsibility as men and women of God that we in our own personal lives, we emphasize the teachings and the doctrine. We emphasize the bread of life. We emphasize that word in our life. We read our Bible every day. We get year Bible reading plans, whatever it is. We come to the church and we get a word and we got apps and we watch YouTube and we got podcasts. Just keep filling your spiritual life with the word while at the same time stay empowered that the Holy Spirit can lead you through temptation, can lead you beside still water, can teach you things through the word of God. In fact, I'll say this, I believe that you'll be limited in what you see in the word if you don't have oil in your life. I think the moment the oil is burning the light and warmth in your heart, then you can see scripture like you've never seen it before. We need to stay hungry for the word and thirsty for the spirit. As the musicians come, I wanna read this last thing to you. Smith Wigglesworth was a minister in the 1940s. I've shared this quote with you before, but I think it's a good way to close today. He shared something he felt God showed him years ago. And in his final belief, they said this is his final moment that he had a prophecy. He, he felt God spoke to this to him, and so he shared it with some people, and they wrote it down. He said, when the new church phase is on the wane, this is in the year 1947, there will be evidence in the churches, something that has not been seen before. A coming together of those with an emphasis on the word and those with an emphasis on the spirit. When the word and spirit come together, there will be the biggest movement of the Holy Spirit that the nation and indeed the world has ever seen. It will mark the beginning of a revival that will eclipse anything that has been witnessed within these shores. I don't know about you, that embodies my heart. I don't wanna be a church that's dead and legalistic. I don't really want that. I don't want my kids in that. I'm thankful for the word. I'm not putting the word down by any stretch. But neither do I want a church that's just disorderly and got fire running everywhere and burning down churches and everybody's prophet lying to everybody. I said what I said. <laughs> for my family, for Ethan's family, I want to be a family that's hungry for the word and thirsty for the spirit. And I want you to be hungry for the word and thirsty for the spirit. I want our church to not get out of order and forget we, we can find this balance. And can I tell you today, it's kind of hard to find. Me and Pastor Aaron were talking this week. We're looking for prototypes that will help us be a church that's spirit-empowered and equipped with the word. I think the body of Christ has seen some extremes in the last 30, 40, 50 years. That what I see in Matthew 25, before the great coming of our Lord, before he splits open the eastern sky, I believe in my heart 
that the church is starting to wake up. And I believe there are people in Columbus, at least, I can speak for this body, that want the spirit and want the word. Amen, everybody? Amen. Will you stand with me all over the room, please? Now listen, this is important. The Bible says that everybody, I want you to look right here for me, just for a moment. Everybody in that passage, the people with the oil and the people with the lamps, the Bible says everybody fell asleep. Did you catch that? Everybody fell asleep waiting on the return. Everybody got drowsy and disengaged. Yeah, they got the oil, they still fell asleep. My prayer for you today is that you'll wake yourself up from this slumber where you found yourself dull and you, maybe you found yourself disengaged. Maybe years ago you were more, you were closer to God or you served more in church or you used to tithe or you used to, you used to and you've just fallen asleep over time. That my prayer today in the presence of God that when the bridegroom comes, he's not gonna find you sleeping. That you're gonna be ready. And you're gonna have fire burning in that window. And when he looks down at your house and looks at your heart and looks at this church, he's gonna say, I knew they were waiting on me to get here. They never forgot about me. They've kept the engagement. So with eyes closed all over the room, if you're in this room and you've been wrestling, I've been sleepy, God. I pray today he wakes you up. I pray he stirs you today that, that your story doesn't have to end in a slumber. Your story doesn't have to end in a sleepy place, but yet you can be awakened today in Jesus' name. It's to wake up. Awake thou, O sleeper, Paul said. In Jesus' name, let today be a day where you say, you know what? I'm going to put first the kingdom of God. I'm going to call on his name again. Some of you have drifted away and calling prodigals back this morning. Today is the day of salvation. Come back. Wake up. It's time. He's coming back. It's going to be soon. He said, be ready. For those of you in this room, you're struggling with the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you today, Holy Spirit ain't nothing to be afraid of. Be open to that oil in your life. For those of you who have struggled with that, that lamp, that word, I pray God gives you a hunger today like you've never had. In Jesus' name. If you're in here right now and you don't know Jesus Christ, hear me today. Don't leave this room without saying yes to Christ. He loves you. He died for you. He's got a plan for your life. He can be a friend to you. He can, he's got a home for you in heaven. He wants to live with you here on earth. What a deal. And if that's you today and you say, you know what, I need to give my life to Christ or I've drifted away and I'm not where I used to be, but today I want to wake up once and for all and say yes to Jesus. I want you to do me a favor. I want to count to three. And even if it's just one of you, it'd be worth it all. I want to count to three and I want to ask you to raise your hand nice and high for me and declare today in Jesus' name, I want to be saved. I want to rededicate my life. I want to get, start again. If that's you, I want you to raise your hand. One, two, three. Go ahead. Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Many hands today. Oh my goodness. Come on, church. Many hands this morning. Many. Keep them up. Keep them up. I think that was 11 or 12 hands I just saw go up. Come on, give God praise. People saying yes. People are waking up. The church is waking up. The people of God are waking up. That's somebody's son and daughter saying yes to Jesus Christ. Come on, let's pray this prayer together. Say, dear God, forgive me of my sins. Wash me clean with your blood. Make me new today. In Jesus' name, by your word, I'll be hungry for your word and thirsty for your spirit. In Jesus' name. And this church said, come on, give God big praise in the house. Come on, hands raised all over the room or on your heart. Come on, you just tell them I'm hungry for you, God. In this 21 days, I'm hungry for you, God. I want to sense your presence, God. I want to feel your closeness. I want to sense your peace. There is no Come on, sing it all over the room. The kingdom is here. Hey. I lay down my old flames to carry your new fire today. Oh, Thank you, Jesus. Where there is new wine, because where there is new wine, God, make us hungry for the word. Make us hungry for the spirit. There is In new Jesus' name. In Jesus' name.
this morning. Pray that over your family, your children, a legacy of oil and legacy of lamp come into your house. In Jesus' name. I believe that. Service doesn't have to be over. If you don't want it to be over, our prayer team is coming. They're going to line across the front. If you need prayer for anything at all, as we're being dismissed in a few moments, you can come down. If you're one of the people that said yes to Jesus, please, please, please come down. We have some material to give you. We want to bless you and pray for you and help you along your new journey with Christ. We are so glad that all of you decided to be with us today. You can give on your way out, and we're so thankful for you. Father, bless this church. <laughs> Fill us with oil. And let us carry that lamp. Put a fire on the inside of us. That in the days ahead, we're going to be strong. And when you come, we're going to be burning bright, ready for your return. In Jesus' name. If you believe it today, somebody give God a big amen. We'll see you at Revival.